Okay, hey guys, we are starting our fetal kidney section, and first thing we want to do as we start talking about uh, learning anatomy is that we want to identify some directional terms that will help us in being able to give reference points as we describe how to locate certain anatomical structures. So the first term we want to describe is dorsal. Dorsal is going towards the back of the animal, and so you might have heard of the term dorsal fin, and so that's like on the back of the dolphin or the top part of the shark. So dorsal, ventral is going to be the opposite direction, so ventral is kind of on the belly surface, and then anterior is moving towards the head region, so in this direction, and then posterior is going to be moving towards the rear, so back this direction. We can also describe some terms that we use in reference to the midline of the animal. So if I were to lay it on its back and I were to look at this maybe imaginary midline that went down the center of the body that divided it in half, if I go towards the outer part of the animal, that's what we refer to as lateral, so going towards the sides. And then if I talk about moving inward toward that invisible midline, then we refer to that as being medial, so going kind of towards the middle part of the animal. So... Those directional terms will help us as we start identifying where certain structures are in reference to other anatomical structures. So we want to first start out also by looking at approximately how old this fetus is. The term fetus means that this pig wasn't born yet, and um, you can tell that because there is umbilical cord that is still visible, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, but we look at the length of the pig to give us an idea of approximately how old this pig might have been. And so if I look at this ruler, I can use this as a reference. And we can see that it is approximately 30 centimeters. And so that means, if you look on the chart that's on the handout that's leaked on this hand, um, assignment, that that's about full term. And so this pig was probably between 112 and 115 days. So that gives us an idea about how far along in the gestation period we're talking about. So we want to look at the head region and make note of some different structures. So number one, you see there's ears. Uh, we call this external ear the pinna, P-I-N-N-A. So the ears are the pinna. We also can see that there are eyelids that are closed. And if you notice, there are little hairs that are kind of sticking out from there. So you notice there's little eyelashes that are visible. And then in the snout, you'll notice that there are nostrils. So two nostrils there on the snout. And it's kind of hard to see here, but there are also teeth that are kind of pointing and sharp there on the inside. So you can see that there are a few teeth that have developed already also. So as we move further down, so you have the head region. You have this middle section here that would be the trunk of the animal. And then back here, it's kind of hard to see, is the tail. And so if I'm looking at this area here, this umbilical cord, um, we'll see if we can get a little bit closer. There are blood vessels that are in there that actually allow blood to be able to flow into the fetus. And those blood vessels um, and this umbilical cord are connected to the placenta. And if you remember back from when we first started talking about animals, the placenta is a blood flow organ that's in the uterus of the mom and it adheres to the uterine wall inside of the mom's uterus. And that placenta allows for blood to come really close um, in the mom and in the fetus's blood supply, but the blood actually doesn't mix. So there's blood vessels that are near each other that allow for diffusion of nutrients and gases and other items, even certain types of um, immune um, Items like uh, antibodies, for example, can pass back and forth, but blood actually stays separate and stays in the fetuses and mom's separate blood vessels. So there is an umbilical vein in there. So you can see the umbilical vein. And then there are two smaller umbilical arteries there. So the umbilical arteries, there's two of those, and they have like a thicker wall. And you can see an umbilical vein that has a larger wall in there. Um, and so that's in the umbilical cord. You also notice on the stomach, I don't know if you can see it very well, there are these little bumps on there. So those are mammary papillae. So those are similar to nipples in humans. And so these in females would connect to mammary glands so that when um, this pig would be old enough to nurse its young, um, that it provides milk for them. Um, I want to switch over really briefly and show you a 
male fetal pig so that we can make a comparison there with those mammary papillae. So here is our male pig, and you notice they also have them too. So obviously in the male, the mammary papillae are not going to be connected to mammary glands, but they have those external um, mammary papillae also. All right, so then we want to move a little bit further back here towards the rear of the pig. And you notice, if I lift up the tail, that there is an opening there. So that opening is the anus. So that's the exit for waste products to be able to leave the pig um, at the end of the digestive tract. But you also notice there is another structure just underneath that. So this is the urogenital papilla. And this is actually an opening that leads into the birth canal or the vagina. So that opening there is called the urogenital opening where I'm pointing the probe in. And then that little part that's projecting out is the urogenital papilla. So that's what we see to give us an indication that this is a female. Um, if this were a male, and we'll look at this in a moment, this structure is absent, but there's another urogenital opening in a different location. So urogenital papilla, urogenital opening, just um, dorsal to that, and then just dorsal to the opening for that urogenital opening is the anus, and that's the exit for solid waste coming out of the digestive tract. So let's switch over now and look at our male pig and look at the rear. So one of the things you notice, obviously, we mentioned this earlier, is that there is an absence of a urogenital papilla. So you still see the anal opening there, but you also see that there's this little bulge here in the rear part of the pig, and that's actually where the testes are housed. So this is the scrotal area. And so that's one difference that you notice from the female and since there's not a urogenital opening here, we got to figure out, well, where was the penis exit in the male for reproduction? So that actually is located in this area here. So again, there's our umbilical cord. And just posterior to the umbilical cord is a little opening right here. And you can see um, there is this little area where there's hair. And this would be where the penis in the male would exit out of during of the process of population and obviously at this point you don't see it exposed when we look at the reproductive system in more detail we'll show you where that structure is internally and then you'll be able to see a little bit better where it exits um, um, during the reproductive process so that is kind of it for the external structures that we're going to point out in this video and then in our next video we're going to be looking at the oral cavity and the abdominal cavity as we study the, di the digestive system